Hey everyone, I'm Jean-Paul and welcome to this getting started video for Beam. Beam allows us to use Ableton Live to control lighting. It's developed by ShowSync, who you may already know from VideoSync. Beam is a separate application that runs alongside Live and acts as the middleman between your lighting rig and your live set. You can create your entire audio and lighting show in Ableton Live, while Beam handles communication with the lights. This means that you can make adjustments in the lighting patch and thus which lights are controlled without touching your live set at all. Beam supports various ArtNet and DMX interfaces. It comes with a number of instruments, effects and fixture profiles which you can customize and expand on. Working with lights can be complex, but working with Beam is not necessarily complicated. So let this video be a guide to help you get started. Before we dive into Beam, I want to give you a quick rundown on the lighting fixtures that are on the table. There are two Stairville LED PARs, a single Martin Atomic 3000 strobe, and two Showtech Kanyo Spot 10s. I'm using a DMX interface with one output, so that means we'll only have one so-called universe. With each DMX universe, you get 512 channels, and depending on how many features a lighting fixture has, the more channels it will use. I assigned the Kanyos, which take up 10 channels each, to addresses 1 and 11, the LED pars to 32 and 36, and the Atomic to 64. We'll need these DMX addresses to make a patch inside Beam. Once Beam has been opened, the first thing you'll see is this empty list. I want to start with the pars, so let's hit create, and we don't have to pick a name necessarily, as it will automatically fill in the name of the lights once I pick a profile, which in this case is the Stairville LED par, and we have two of those. As I said before, we only have one DMX universe, so I'll go straight to address, and the first one, as I mentioned, is 32. In the fixture profile we selected is stored how many channels this particular PAR fixture uses, so Beam knows to which address it should patch the subsequent PAR automatically. You'll see this once I press create, but first we have to come up with a tag with which we'll be able to address these two PARs in Ableton Live. For now, we just use one tag per group, but you can add multiple tags to a fixture. This way, you can let one instrument control only a part of the lighting rig, while another controls all of them together. But for now, I'll just go with parse and press create. As you can see, it adds the two pars to the patch list, with each their own DMX address, and if we click on one of the pars, we can also change the MIDI note to which they respond in live. I'll get back on that later. So, once we've done all that, we can go to live, and we can grab the PAR instrument from the user library, Beam Plugins, Instruments, and drag it onto a MIDI channel, and then select PARs from the list. Then we can control the intensity of both of the PARs, and we can change the color here with hue, saturation, and lightness, or RGB. Instead of controlling the general intensity here, we can also control it with MIDI notes, and for that we're going to have to make a clip. So as I said before, the starting note is C3 of the first par and C sharp 3 for the second one. And let's press play. Now these two notes follow the envelope at the bottom of the instrument. So the attack, which is given in beats, it's currently direct, and release is one beat. So the fade out time is one beat at the end of each MIDI note. The maximum intensity of the envelope is 1, which is basically 100%. So I can lower this and then the brightness goes down. And I can also control the brightness with velocity. So if I go back to the clip and then lower the velocity on one of the notes, one of the pars will be less bright than the other one. Another way to control the brightness of these pars is by using the volume fader on this channel. So if I lower this, it will lower the intensity for both of the pars together. I can also mute the channel just to turn off the pars. And similarly, I can use solo if I would have multiple channels. And it almost goes without saying, but like with any other device in life, you can automate all parameters from Beam's instruments and effects, as well as map them to a MIDI controller. And those are the first steps in controlling lights with Beam and Ableton Live. The next fixture we are going to add is the Martin Atomic 3000. So we're going to go to Create again and go to Profile, select the Martin Atomic 3000. We only have one this time, 
and the address is 64. And I'm going to give this the strobe tag and press create. So now back to live and we're going to grab the strobe device, put it on a new MIDI channel and select it from the list. Now we have two extra parameters here that we often see in strobe lights. So we have strobe rate and strobe duration. So let's increase the intensity here. And if we lower the rate, we get fewer bursts and we can control the duration of each burst with the duration parameter. Now, this particular strobe light doesn't have any different colors, but some other strobe lights do. So you have the option here to use that. And just like with the pars, we can control the strobe with MIDI notes, but it would be cool if we could have different strobe rates and durations or even envelopes for different MIDI notes. So for that, I'm going to group the strobe device into a drum rack. And let's give this one a very low rate and a short duration. And then let's copy this strobe to this second slot and give this one a much longer duration. Now let's make an MIDI note and let's trigger that. And there we have it. So using a drum rack in combination with the strobe or any other type of fixture for that matter, can be a great and easy way to get different results with the same fixtures, all depending on the MIDI notes you send into the drum rack. On top of that, we can of course group these lighting instruments with audio instruments inside drum rack, so that for example you get a different color or strobe rate depending on whether you trigger a kick or a snare sample. And not only are drum racks supported by Beam this way, but also any other type of racks. Now we have two moving heads left on the table, so let's go and patch those as well. Let's go back to create and select the Showtech Kanyo Spot 10. We have two of those and the address of that is one. Press create and we can see the moving heads get into position. And now we can go back to live and grab our moving head instrument and put it on a new MIDI channel. Select the Kanyos. And we're now turning them on. However, they're pointing up, so we can't really see them that well. So let's see if we can change that. And there they are. Now these moving heads have a color wheel, so this color picker doesn't work for these particular moving heads. However, we can control the color wheel with the scale effect. So now I'm gonna go to effects and pick scale put it behind the moving head and now in this list I can select the color wheel. Now if I link the out low and the out high I can use the out high to control the color wheel. Zero is white and up to 0.5 in this case are all the different colors and above that it starts to do a chase. That's just because it's these particular fixtures. Um, however you may have noticed that we have quite a few parameters here and these parameters are all here because these parameters are provided by all the fixtures that are in our patch list. So if our patch list is empty, there won't be any parameters to see here. Let's set this one to blue. And let's get an LFO in here so we can move these moving heads around a little bit. So right now I'm going to pick tilt in this list. And because tilt in the moving head device over here is almost set to 1, I'm going to reset this to its original value, 0.5. So now, if we really want to see these moving heads move around, we should set the minimum value to minus 0.5, so it reaches 0 over here, and the maximum to plus 0.5, so that ultimately the moving heads will use the entire range, and we'll see that especially if we lower the modulation rate. The last thing I want to show here is the spread parameter. If I set it to 100%, one of the moving heads will continue as normal, but the other one will move in the exact opposite way. However, that's because we only have two moving heads at the moment, so that means that the waveform is being split into two, and one of the two fixtures is starting 180 degrees away from the starting phase. So if we'd have, let's say, four moving heads, one would start at zero degrees, another at 90, the next one at 180, and the last one at 270 degrees. 
To finish things up, let's create a little light show here. So let's turn down the intensity, create a MIDI clip and trigger our two moving heads with the C3 and the C sharp three notes. And let's move these par notes somewhere else so they don't light up at the same time as the strobe. Boom. Look at that. That's awesome. If you don't have any actual lights lying around, you can also use a visualizer like Capture instead. There's a link in the description that will take you to the Beam manual. There you can read how to connect the visualizer to Beam and download an example live set for use with that visualizer. I hope you learned something from this video and for any further questions feel free to use the comment section. Thank you for watching. Bye.